Hello everyone, I am Onur Denizhan. I'm a PhD student in Mechanical Engineering and Mechanics Department at Lehigh University. In this presentation, I will be presenting optimum design of an alternative and round wheel component ball. In first slide, I would like to mention about the history of the ball. Bows are very historical weapon, but currently people use uh, bows for only sport purposes. In this picture, you see the long bow. Long bow is a very historical bow and the very first bow, it has a limp and the strings. Time by time, people try to change the limp shape and then they uh, have the recurve bow to increase the efficiency of the bow. And then most advanced and the most uh, efficient bow is the component bow you can see in this picture. The first dynamic and the static model was introduced by Hickman in 1937 and it's very fundamental paper. And the first component bow was introduced by Allen in 1968. In this study, we focus on the component bow, therefore I would like to introduce component bow's uh, parts. So uh, the component bow, all has the pulley system, cable, spring, and the limp, and the riser, and the cable guard. Cable guard just to keep cables uh, uh, away from the riser, and riser we use it to handle the component ball. Um, the, the cam system has a two pulleys, let's say for upper limb, if we focus on it, and the, the cable wraps around to the smaller pulley and the connects to the limp axle at the other end of the ball and the string wraps around to the bigger uh, pulley and the excel point is not the center of the pulleys it's uh, because of the mechanical advantage of the ball and you can see the drum position here and the excel point so the pulleys rotate around to the excel i would like to mention about the mathematical model of the ball so you see the initial position and the drum position of the ball uh, this is the riser, riser is not elastic. And then uh, if we, this is a string and if we pull the string, then these pulleys uh, rotate around to the axle on clockwise. So at this point is the refer to the axle. So we have some known variables and the, based on the kinematics and the geometry of the ball, we can write these equations and we can find these angles for the initial position of the ball. And then we can find the other design variables and then we can find the angles from these equations, we can find these angles for any position of the ball during the motion. And the, finally, we can find the, from these equations for the rest of the, the variables and then we can be ready uh, to figure out the, our objective function for optimization. So first of all, I'd like to mention about our optimization criteria. The main purpose of our optimization is to reduce the maximum force and to maximize the potential energy. Therefore, based on that purpose, uh, we can write three different objective functions. First of all, we can minimize the draw force for a given draw distance. But the problem is that if we minimize the draw force, it means that we are minimizing the potential energy as well. Therefore, we need additional constraint to keep uh, potential energy high. The second option is that to maximize the area under the draw force versus draw distance curve, this area give us the potential energy as well. But if we maximize this area, it means that we are maximizing the force as well. We need additional constraint to keep force in certain range. As a third option, we can uh, maximize the potential energy is stored by the limbs. Basically, the objective functions two and three refer to the potential energy, but we can write potential energy two different way. In this study, we choose the third option, this potential energy is stored by the limbs. We can uh, write the objective function in, uh, in this way, and this equation introduced by the Thermos in 2016, we use the same equations with him. In these equations, we have five design variables. One of them is A, is the ratio between the length of the limb, elastic portion with respect to the limb total length. L is the limb length, and the K is the spring constant of the elastic portion of the limb. And you can see our angle theta U and theta zero is the initial angle of the initial position of the ball. And we assume that cables and the string are inextensible 
and the, these design boundary conditions chosen by uh, the, the initial uh, uh, design by Thermos. So in, after using the SQP optimization method in MATLAB, we received these two graphs. So in left side, you can see draw potential energy graphs and the optimum design has a higher potential energy than the initial design. And the draw force is, if we check the right side, uh, you can see that the draw force is uh, higher than the or initial design, almost 10%. Uh, and it makes sense because we apply more force and then we have the more potential energy. If we check the results table here, we only optimize the five design variables. And if you check the numbers here, you can see that the optimum results are very close to our initial design. Only the spring stiffness is, uh, uh, lies under the upper bound. So, and as I mentioned before, the maximum force is uh, almost 10% higher than the initial design. And we have only slightly differences. As a conclusion, we maximized our potential energy and the uh, results show on slight differences between initial design and optimum design. And the initial design string position is slightly different from the initial design. It's much more closer to the riser midpoint. And the optimum design requires more force. Uh, in future study, we are planning to investigate other objective functions. Thanks for your attendance in this presentation.